Hey, another video. I think I'm going to call this one um, my story number three because I'm, you know, I figured I might as well just talk about this part of me, my life, my parents, that type of thing. Um, so I was, as I said before, a very spirited child. I had my own views, my own opinions, and that was from a very early age. Um, my father, in order to keep me in line, would basically spank me, but spank is not really the appropriate word for that. Um, basically, I was hit with leather belts and hands and there were certain times where I would actually, because I lived in the country, I would have to go to a tree and actually rip off a branch from the tree in order to get beat with it. So that was what I went through. And I could get spanked or whatever for almost anything. I remember if I didn't sit still enough at the Kingdom Hall, I was taken outside and dealt with. This was my upbringing until I was probably, I want to say about 10 or 11. Because when you go to school and you have these marks on your legs and stuff, especially when you have gym and have to change in front of other people, that's not a good thing. <laughs> you know, obviously the teachers will notice and call whoever they need to. Even though I went through that, I still love my parents because, <laughs> as I said, I was different. I thought different even. I understood that in order for them to be able to inflict that type of pain on me, they themselves had to be going through so much themselves, pain-wise, emotionally, mentally. So even then, as I said, I'm an empath. I could put myself in their situation, which made it easier for me to deal with. I have a brother, as I said, he also was not treated the best, but for the most part, he's always been very good and did exactly what they wanted him to do or what they said. I was not like that. <laughs> so as I said, I, I had to be chastised or disciplined quite often. And I remember, you know, my father always saying when he was about to, you know, do this to me, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, right. Let me beat you and see how you feel about it. You're a grown man and my, I'm a small female child who you're beating on. How much sense does this make? It makes sense later because, you know, now I know who Jehovah is and who he truly is and who they represent. So this, in their minds, was okay. <laughs> um, moving forward. Um, at this present time, my brother, who, as I said, I still love my family. He has a daughter and three sons. So I have a niece and three nephews. I was that aunt who would show up. If I couldn't be there for the birth, I would be there a few days shortly after to see them. Even though I live in a completely different state than my brother, I would make the trip, not just when they were born, but every chance I got in order to spend time with them. All of them, because I love them. My kids are older. <laughs> so to have little kids, you know, and, and be able to interact with them and remember how fun it is and how innocent they are, um, that was so nice to me. <laughs> But once again, once I disassociated myself, I lost all of that. Um, I was the one who would be there for everyone, no matter what they needed. Not just my family, but those in the congregation as well. I was the one who, if they needed someone to volunteer on the ministry school because someone canceled, I would do it. That's just how I was. I never agreed with the actual organization, but I love people. I always have. That's just me. So what I'm going to do now <laughs> is 
is read some text messages between me and my mother. Just, these were done, okay, I'll tell you this, the backstory. I knew I was disassociating myself, and what I did is flew down to the state that they live in to make sure they would be okay, because that's what I do. I wanted to make sure for one last time they had everything they needed, their house, yard, whatever was taken care of. My father will not let anyone else cut his hair <laughs> but me. So I went down to cut his hair for one last time. Told them what I was going to do before I left for the airport to come back to my home state. And so the text messages that I'm going to read <laughs> are between me and my mother once I returned home. So. These are them, <laughs> see, I'm gonna read those. So my mom starts out, Serenity, that's my name. I am still very, very concerned about you even though you say you are okay. Please be humble and accept counsel. This is not you, Serenity. And then she writes again, you are my child. I. Okay. I know you from your first day. If it is that you need time to refocus, please take the time. If you have contact with whoever put this in your mind, please know that this is not healthy. Your choice is not going to bring you happiness. We all love you. So many people love you dearly. I now have realized what a beautiful, and beloved person you are by so many. You have a husband also who cares deeply for you, even though he is imperfect, like we all are. It was at this point she realized that my husband, we were pretending all this time and he wasn't who he was supposed to be. But even in with her knowing that, she still was, you know, pushing that relationship, knowing what was going on. So in the end, she's like, please. So she's begging me not to disassociate myself. And then she says, we love you again. So I replied back, I love you also. Always will love you. No one put this idea into my head. It has always been in my heart, but I went along to keep everyone happy at the expense of my own feelings. You really have to search your own heart when you tell me this choice won't bring me happiness. Do you think I was happy all the decades living in a way that was a fake version of myself? I am honest enough with myself to admit the issues in my life and do something about it, even though it is not easy. Too many people are satisfied living life on autopilot and not addressing deep-seated issues that make them unhappy because it's more comfortable to do nothing or take medicines or any other means to cope with the mental and emotional unhappiness they feel inside. I let past issues and present things that do not positively impact my life go. And by doing that, I truly healed and had inner peace. I also finally understand the true meaning of spirituality. I am not atheist. And then I mentioned I was quarantined because I went to her state and coming back to my state, her state was one of the ones where if we return from it, we have to quarantine. <laughs> so that's what that text was about. And then the next the day that I was going to be, um, it was going to be announced that I was disassociating myself. She once again texted me and said, good morning, Serenity. Just wanted you to know if you did not want to be with us, you could have walked away, but it is your choice to do what you decided to do. We respect what you wanted. <laughs> this is very, very hard on all of us. Occasionally, we may have to interact briefly because of the children, but strictly business. 
Please know that you are loved from our heart, but we all take responsibility for what we decide. Thanks for all you have done for us and having a reputation of a caring daughter. Take care. So that was her last message to me. Take care. And she loves me. But even through all, like I said, everything I've done, not just for her, my family, other members, friends that were Jehovah's Witnesses, in that one instant, even though they admit that I've been caring, loving, all of that did not matter. So you tell me, how can you say you love me when you can so easily toss me to the side? I'm okay with that because I'm okay with myself. And I realize I do deserve better than to have people in my life like that. I know it may seem harsh. I do still love them. But I do not need that type of spirit in my life at all. And I look at it like this. I actually became a better person for leaving Jehovah's Witnesses. And they are missing out on that person. It's their loss, not mine. So <laughs> that is basically my third story, my disassociation story. Um, yeah, I'll, my next video, actually, I probably will rant because there are things that I witnessed within the organization and even things I know now that I shouldn't, <laughs> that I will expose. Because before I was trying to be very, you know, courteous and polite about it, I'm over that. It's time to expose them because that's what the God that I know exists now wants. She wants the truth to be known. And that's what I'm going to do. So that's it. You guys have a good day. And I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.